Hi there. So, uh, back once more. This time uh, I'm not creating a, a video while I talk a lot. Uh, I just shot some photos or used some photos from yesterday because I have to use uh, some measurements as well, which are just images to begin with. I'll just keep it simple. It's gonna be a talk video and some pictures about measurements because there's not much more to see if you take measurements besides me making the measurements, but not all that interesting to be honest at least I don't think so so uh, what I did uh, the mic is uh, you can see the mic just peeking in into the frame uh, it's set to one meter from the loudspeaker uh, and the panel is strapped to an old ribbon frame of mine to just give it a bit of a baffle and as well being able to just have it sit somewhere to be able to measure it um, the woofer is underneath I don't use, uh, the ribbon is of course also not used when I uh, measured this thing. So this is the multimeter and I used it to calibrate the output voltage. What I've done is uh, connect the multimeter directly to the output of the amplifier. Then I use Room EQ Wizard to set the voltage. I open up the generator tab, uh, which looks like this. And then I'll select frequency uh, 1K in this case and, uh, oh well, do select tones. The output is set to minus 6 dB and I press play. Now since I only have the meter connected I won't hear anything but I will see the voltage on the multimeter. Then I adjust the voltage until it reaches 2.85 volts. Well, then I connect the loudspeaker back to the amplifier. So we end up with the image uh, shown here. I then did my first measurement and uh, this is the result. Um, the green line is the single-ended version, so with only one of the magnet panels or stators. Uh, so green is uh, with only one of those panels uh, and blue uh, has the push-pull variant, so has two panels. Uh, the measurement is gated with a window of 3 milliseconds, so the Especially the frequency down low, below 2K, is not of much use in this measurement. You can see it does a weird wiggle and that's about it. But I wanted to use this gated stuff because I wanted to know the efficiency. And the single-ended one is around 85-86 dB and the push-pull variant, which normally should in theory be uh, 6 dB louder, although I never never had a panel that did exactly 6 dB, usually it was 4 or 5 maybe. But in this case it's only 3. Around 3 and I'm not sure why. Also clearly visible is that the peak at 9k or something is in the push-pull variant uh, much larger. Uh, on the other side the dip in the single-ended at around 7, 7.4k is deeper on the single-ended version versus the double-ended or push-pull version. The push-pull version has a uh, efficiency around 89 up till 90 but let's say 89 dB at 1 meter at 2.85 volt. So this is the distortion plot of the single-ended version at this same 8.5 volt. So here you can see that distortion is quite, well, it is too low to have a have an idea what's going on. So I probably have to uh, increase the output to do so. What is visible is the peak at 10K. And what is also visible is that the distortion rises the lower you go. This is the distortion plot of the push-pull variant. This looks less nice than the single-ended one, but it's actually better. The output is uh, 3dB louder, so also the distortion is a bit more visible. I think the single-ended one was just a little bit on the low volume to have a, have a nice distortion measurement. You can see quite clearly that the peak creates uh, distortion as well at 9k, so you definitely don't want to use the driver at 9-10k for sure. Also visible is that the distortion down below 500 Hz is far lower in the push-pull variant compared to the single-ended one. The distortion is a percentage of the fundamental, so this plot in single-ended looks better than the push-pull. 
but because the output volume of the push-pull is higher, the percentage is lower, although the graph does look a little bit better on the single-ended one. So it's not only like a flat line is better. Since I want to look at the distortion a little bit more and as well check how loud it can play, I tried the maximum power my amplifier can handle. In this method, or with this method, distortion will be more clearly visible and also increase because of the higher output. I was a bit disappointed about the amplifier. I knew it was a shitty amp, but still, apparently it cannot deliver more than 30 watts in this thing. I am pleased with the result of the speaker itself. I mean, it reaches 97 dB at 1 meter. That's quite loud, at least far louder than I would listen to it. At 97 dB, the distortion between 540 Hz and 7K is still under 0.2% total harmonic distortion. I think that's acceptable. This is the push-pull variant at maximum volume. In this case, that's 100 dB at 1 meter. So, well, the 3 dB louder than the single-ended one, as expected, but... Distortion is better for the push-pull, especially down low. It does have slightly higher distortion around 5-6k than the single-ended one. But overall it is lower. And last but not least, a waterfall plot from the push-pull panel at 2.85 volt at 1 meter. So it's not as close as you might want to, but this is what I got at the moment. So uh, I also think it's only valid to around 2k. I'm not sure, I used a 3 millisecond window, so the same as the gated measurement. So I'm not too sure yet if I'm gonna use the panel and what for, and if that would be single-ended or push-pull. I think that depends kind of on the volume you wanna reach. Single-ended can work perfectly fine, but the push-pull can play a little bit louder and has less distortion doing so. In the end, I'm not sure yet what to do with these panels. Maybe I'll make some random speaker, I don't know. Anyhow, if you like the content, please subscribe. If you would like to support me, check out my Patreon or my PayPal. In the meantime, I'll find a good use for these panels. See you around, bye bye.